Well, praise the Lord, and good evening, and welcome to our Sunday evening service. And we're getting a uh, start here about six, a little 6.30, a little bit late for uh, tonight. We had a lot of stuff to do, and kind of helping our kids get, uh, they're getting all their stuff moved down to Oklahoma uh, tomorrow. So we were kind of busy with that and helping them get things kind of ready to go. And uh, we're just thankful uh, to the Lord for his strength and, and all these things that God has blessed in this day. Uh, pray that you had a good day and, uh, you know, just thank the Lord for, for everything. He's really, really awesome. He's, he's awesome. So tonight we are going to be looking at second Corinthians chapter five. Uh, if you were with us this morning, we were looking at chapter, uh, four of second Corinthians, but tonight we're going to look at second Corinthians chapter five. So, Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, praise you, love you, adore you. God, you're so good to us. Please, uh, Lord, tonight, uh, bless your word and bless those that are listening in. I pray that you would strengthen them, encourage them, and help them um, in their walk with you. Lord, I thank you for the promises of your word. And I thank you for the just the comfort and the assurance that we have, that we get from you, Lord. It is so amazing living for you and looking forward to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, I pray that you would bless again your word one more time, Lord, tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, praise God. So if you have your Bible, and I do pray you do, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now, he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences." Well, praise the Lord. You know, this is talking so much about, you know, our desire. You know, we, we know, praise God, going back to verse 1, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. You know, thanks be to God that we know that God um, has has saved us. Have you, have you repented of your sins and trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You know when you die, this body is going to return back to the dust. You know, the Bible says, you know, from dust, for dust thou art and dust thou shalt return. You know, the, the body is dust, but the spirit was given by God. You know, the, our life, our very life is given by God. And when we're born again, we have eternal life in Christ. And we know that that God, you know, it, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, we know that as soon as we die, we are in his presence forever and ever and ever. We have that confidence knowing that death for a Christian is not a finality. It is just death simply is a transition to eternal life from this, from this, you know, this life to eternal life. And, and you're going to be with the Lord forever. Now, he also has a promise that this body will be resurrected. This body will be changed to one that doesn't break down anymore. It doesn't grow old anymore. doesn't have all the health problems that we have today. And I'm really looking forward to that. And I thank God that this is a promise that we have from him. 
It says, For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. We are looking forward to that day. We are, we are, uh, really, I mean, your heart as a Christian should be, should be focused on that day when Jesus comes, on that day when, when our, when we are, when He makes that call, right? The dead in Christ will be raised and that we would are alive and remain caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. I mean, are you looking forward to that day when the Lord returns for His church? I mean, looking forward to that day i thank god that there's a day coming when we are going to be with the king of kings and the lord of lords forever and ever it says if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life we know that this body is is um you know what is it that Paul talked about in this body, in this body of death, being talked, you know, that this body is breaking down, but we have an eternal one, you know, not, not made with hands. God, his power did it. You know, he, you are born again of, you know, by grace you're saved through faith. It's the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. I mean, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. This is a work of the Lord. This is what he does, making you a new creature as you repented. And trusted Jesus. It says now he that wrought, hath wrought this self same thing is God. Who also hath given unto us the earnest of the spirit. So the earnest of the spirit. The Holy Spirit. You know he has shown us through by giving us the Holy Spirit. That uh, this is a guarantee of the promise that he has given. That you will have eternal life. That you have. That you'll pass from this present darkness into, into light eternal with him. You know, being in the presence of the Lord Jesus forever and ever, I mean, you're in the presence of of light and love. You know, this is that's true love, not the one that the world does today. They like to use love to justify all manner of perversion, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the love that is of God. God is love, and we're talking about love that is consistent with his word. You know, love doesn't violate God's word. Love keeps his commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you say that you love God and you don't keep his commandments, you're a liar. So the world's version of love is not love, but lust and pride. And uh, we see that demonstrated today. Man, um, to his own peril, disregards what God has said. It says, therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. So if your heart's desire it should be that uh, I'm ready to go. If, are you ready to go? Are you ready if the Lord calls you tonight to go to be with him forever and ever? Are you ready? Have you have you resigned yourself to, to, to looking for him? Do you love him with everything? Or are you captivated by this world, this present day? It says, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Everything that we do, we should be accepted of the Lord, right? We should be doing those things that are right, good, and pleasing in his sight, not those things that are self-pleasing, those things that God has said not to do. We shouldn't be doing those things. We should be living our lives to please the Lord, living our lives as servants of Christ, getting out there and doing those things that God has called us to do. You know, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. The testimony was that he what he 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 was pleasing God. He pleased God in his life. He he walked with Him. It is such an amazing thing. I want to get that quote exactly. It's over in Jude. I get that quote exactly for you because I think it's kind of important. Amen. Let's go to Jude. And Enoch also, seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly of, among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Isn't that an amazing thing that, you know, we see that Enoch, way back in the beginning in Genesis, Enoch is, is talking about um, the Lord coming with ten thousands of his saints. Revelation 19 talks about that as well. 
And uh, we just thank God. We thank God for, for that, uh, that testimony. Amen. We do thank the Lord. Amen. God is good. I'm just, I love his word. Amen. And it's just fantastic. Okay, getting back to our, back to it. It says here, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive of the things done in his body, according that, um, to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So this is a guarantee that we'll all be before the judgment seat of Christ. So this is why in your life today, you should be living your life just like that next that next verse says in 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Knowing the terror of the Lord. It says, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. You know, we know God keeps his word. We know it. And as Christians, we also know that we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, Christ um, is judging us according to the things that we've done as servants, you know, because we belong to him, right? As Christians, we belong to the Lord. Now, he's not judging us in this in this respect here as the world is, because the world that hasn't put their faith and trust in Jesus suffers the wrath of God. You won't suffer the wrath of God as a Christian. But you still are going to be accountable for everything that you've done, you know, whether it be good or bad. So my suggestion is if you sin against God, man, repent now. Don't wait. Repent, get rid of that out of your life and understand that the that God keeps his promise and the he is going to judge this world and the wrath of God is going to be poured out on this world. So we need to be out there telling people about Jesus. We need to tell people the good news that they can escape that wrath by fleeing to Christ. And, um, you know, it's very important. If we don't do that, then, um, you know, we lose people are lost, not just temporarily, but forever. That's a horrible thing. So, lesson tonight. Looking forward to that day that we're with the Lord. And that should prompt us to action because we all will be before the Lord and we all will be before the judgment seat of Christ. So, get out there. Tell some people about Jesus. Be a, be a faithful servant. You know, you want to hear that, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Be that good and faithful servant today. Get out there and do the things that God has told you to do. And say the things that God has told you to say. And don't, don't be a slothful ser servant. Get out there and work for the Lord while there is yet time. Amen? Well, God bless you. This is what I have for you tonight. I pray that you would be blessed and strengthened in the Lord. And walk with Him all the days of your life. God bless. We will see you next time. Uh, Monday. Encouraging Word broadcast at 6 o'clock. God bless. Have a good night. Jesus.